Understanding the Legislation on Family Law in British Columbia. You probably remember from your high school civics class that the Constitution Act of 1867, formerly known as the British North America Act, divides the powers involved in running a country between the federal government, the Government of Canada, and the provincial governments. For the purposes of this discussion, we really don't care about them, we just care about the Government of British Columbia and the Government of Canada. Section 91 of the Constitution Act gives the federal government powers over exciting things such as navigation and shipping, the Postal Service, unemployment insurance, bankruptcy and insolvency, beacons, buoys, lighthouses, and Sable Island, the criminal law, and, most importantly from the point of view of someone who practices family law, marriage and divorce. Section 92 gives the provincial government's powers over other things, including public and reformatory prisons, shops, saloons, taverns, and auctioneers, the management and sale of public lands, local works and undertakings, hospitals, asylums, and charities, the administration of justice, and the solemnization of marriage and property and civil rights. Together, these powers are responsible for giving us the legislation on family law. The federal government's power over marriage and divorce allows it to create laws such as the Civil Marriage Act, which says who may marry whom, the Marriage Prohibited Degrees Act, which talks about the degree of relatedness by blood or by adoption within which one may not marry. In other words, you can't marry your mom or dad, but you can marry your cousin. It also gives us the Divorce Act. The government of British Columbia's powers over the solemnization of marriage gives us the Marriage Act, and its powers over property and civil rights give us the Family Law Act. Together, the Family Law Act and the Divorce Act are the main laws about family law in Canada and in British Columbia. The Divorce Act talks about, as you might expect, divorce. It also talks about parenting time and contact, it talks about how parents make decisions about their children, it talks about child support, the payment of spousal support. The Family Law Act talks about a lot of the same things, but not quite. It also talks about parenting time and contact. It also talks about parental responsibilities, which are almost exactly the same thing as decision-making responsibility. It talks about the payment of child support and the payment of spousal support. It talks about how property and debt are divided. It talks about how you decide who the parents of a child are, what happens when children are conceived by assisted reproduction, and how you determine who their parents are, the management and care of children's property when they are minors and unable to care for it for themselves, personal protection orders when there is family violence, and property protection orders. But these are really the most important things that most people worry about most of the time. And as you can see, the Family Law Act and the Divorce Act talk about some, but not quite all, of the same things. Only the Family Law Act talks about the division of property and debt, and only the Divorce Act talks about divorce. Now, legislation also comes with regulations, which are a kind of lesser sort of le uh, legislation. The most important regulation to the Divorce Act is the Child Support Guidelines. The Child Support Guidelines, which have been adopted by every province and territory in Canada except for Quebec, talk about how you calculate child support, how you calculate parents' shares of children's special and or extraordinary expenses, and how you calculate income for those purposes. The most important regulation to the Family Law Act is the Family Law Act regulation. That regulation talks about who is entitled to practice as a family law mediator, or a family law arbitrator, or a parenting coordinator, and it adopts the federal child support guidelines for the purposes of British Columbia. Now, these two laws uh, are awesome, but they don't apply to everybody. The Divorce Act only applies to people who are married to each other and people who used to be married to each other. The Family Law Act applies to these people as well, but it also applies to people who have lived together in a marriage-like relationship for at least two years. Under the Family Law Act, these people are unmarried spouses, but they're commonly called common-law spouses. It also talks about people who have lived together in a marriage-like relationship for less than two years, but have had a child together, and it talks about people who are parents or guardians.
So if you are a married spouse, the Divorce Act applies to you. So does the Family Law Act. And that means that you're entitled to ask the court for orders about divorce, parenting time and contact, parental responsibilities, child support, spousal support, and property debt. Now, if you are an unmarried spouse who has lived with your partner for two years or more, the Family Law Act is the only act that applies to you, not the Divorce Act, but you can ask for orders about everything that's available under the Family Law Act, including parenting time, parental responsibilities, child support, spousal support, and dividing property or debt. Now, if you are that other kind of unmarried spouse, you've lived together with your partner for less than two years and you've had a child with your partner, the Family Law Act applies to you, but you're only able to ask for orders about parenting after separation, the payment of child support, and the payment of spousal support. Now, if you are a parent and don't qualify as an unmarried spouse or as a married spouse, only the Family Law Act applies to you, and you're only allowed to ask for orders about parenting after separation and the payment of child support. And there you have it. So the two main laws in British Columbia are the Provincial Family Law Act and the Federal Divorce Act. The regulation to the Family Law Act talks about who can be a mediator or an arbitrator or a parenting coordinator, and the key main regulation to the Divorce Act is the Child Support Guidelines that talks about how we calculate child support and parents' share of children's special expenses. And together, the Family Law Act and the Divorce Act are the legislation on family law in British Columbia.